I don't want to talk about this. Hi there, my name is Sophia Metropolis and I wanted to make this video to talk about why I have decided to close my business. If you are unfamiliar with me and my work, I am an artist and in 2017, when I was a senior in college and 21 years old, I was also a competitive weightlifter. As a competitive weightlifter, I found that there was a severe lack of media for women in the sport. So as an artist, I decided to fill that by creating at the time, what was called Snatch Zine, which was a zine that I made for one of my classes my senior year of college. I ended up sharing that on Instagram and on Reddit. I had 75 sales of copies of the magazine, and that was really where my business began. I am now 25, and I have been running Snatch Magazine for three years, and I have decided that it is time for me to close Snatch Magazine. In this video, I want to cover some of the reasons why I decided to close the magazine and also some of my favorite parts about running this business and some things that I'm looking forward to change going forward. I'm quite sad about the closure of the magazine, but I also feel like it is me as a person trying to align my work more closely with who I am. And the closure of the magazine was a personal decision and was not a result of anything negative or anything that happened. It was just something that I was considering for a long time and the decision was ultimately expedited because of COVID-19. Once the coronavirus hit, it became very clear to me that it felt inappropriate for me to be promoting the sales of my products and especially regarding something that was so quickly taken away from from so many people. I was supposed to have taken a trip abroad during the month of March where I had planned to take a conscious step back from Snatch Magazine and ultimately of course that trip didn't happen so the coronavirus kind of took that step back for me. I had been considering closing down Snatch Magazine for a long time, largely because I myself retired from the sport of weightlifting in May of last year of 2019, and I was continuing to make work for the magazine, and I was continuing to create content and promote things and have discussions with people, and I think ultimately I struggled with that because I was no longer invested. At the time that I stopped lifting, I had fallen out of love with the sport. Um, so because of that, that was a big reason in why I wanted to take a step back from Snatch Magazine, but ultimately the reason why I have decided to close the store is because the store is no longer able to sustain itself. Once COVID-19 happened and everybody was in lockdown, I had pretty much my sales dried up almost immediately. And part of that was because it felt inappropriate for me to continue to promote the things that I was selling. Contributing to consumerist culture has always been something that I have really struggled with. And when I started Snatch Magazine, I never wanted to be an apparel company. That was always something that I felt like I had to do because I was selling stickers. And at one point I had so many sticker orders, but they were only two to four dollars. So I wasn't making enough money to sustain the amount of work that I was putting into packing these orders. So I started selling apparel because I wanted to figure out ways to sell a higher priced item so that I could make a little bit more money to return on my time investment. Eventually, because of weightlifting, I was making so many sacrifices in my personal life to do weightlifting, to continue to be a competitive weightlifter. I would not take a full-time job. I would take only part-time jobs. I was living without insurance. I was just making a lot of decisions and a lot of priorities so that I could weightlift, which at the time I felt like the magazine was the right thing for me to be making because it was a reflection of all of this energy that I was putting into it. But over the years, over courses of injuries and drama and frustrations with the sport itself and the people running it and the people in it, I fell out of love with the sport. And you know, after breaking my body so many times to the point where I was concerned that I wouldn't be able to live a normal functional life at the end of it, it felt like I was making all of these sacrifices sacrifices to only just try and put myself back together enough to break myself again. And I think it's important to touch on these things because I think my decision to quit weightlifting and my decision to close my business kind of go hand in hand because my business niche was so heavily reliant on my participation in the sport. Since May of last year, I have still been running the magazine and for about a year I continued to make work, but I didn't feel as creatively fulfilled as I once did making things for the magazine, partially because I didn't care 
care anymore. And I know that sounds harsh, but I just wasn't invested in weightlifting and I'm at the point where I'm extremely disillusioned with the sport of weightlifting and my frustrations started to outweigh my excitement. So that is a big reason why I decided to close it. I think also Snatch Magazine was always just me and it was always just my art and my ideas and my concepts. And I don't want to discredit the presence of the people that have been following Snatch Magazine since the beginning or since early on. Those people, they know who they are, have been incredibly helpful and motivating and I received so many positive messages while I was doing it that other people felt seen by the work that I was making. But I think ultimately it is about going forward, me no longer making work that isn't under my own name. At the time that this video goes live, I will have sent out an email to my email list subscribers announcing the closure of the store. So just for all of you, my store will be closing at the end of the month of July and the website will remain up just for archival purposes and in case I ever do decide to open it back up and any remaining inventory will most likely, but probably not immediately, be moved to Etsy. If you are here because you got that Snatch Magazine email from me, please subscribe to this channel if you want to continue supporting me as an artist. I would really appreciate it. YouTube is the direction that I've decided to go in for now. You can always get in contact with me through my website, which is linked in the description below. And as far as business reasons behind that, part of it is because Etsy has its own marketplace, so I no longer have to continue to promote Snatch Magazine, and that people who are interested in that kind of work will still be able to find it without me having to direct them straight to my website. I think there was also this perception while I was running Snatch Magazine that it was so much bigger than it actually was, and no matter how many times I said on the Instagram posts that it was just me running the show, I think people still had this expectation that there was some sort of team of people, and ultimately I had continued it because it was helping me pay for my life. It was helping pay for me to be a creator and helping for me to continue to be a weightlifter. It was essentially my third job. And I think when a lot of people are running small businesses, they say, I'm going to put every dollar back into the magazine, which is what I did early on when I didn't need the money. And then eventually I was spending sometimes 30 to 60 hours a week working on the magazine. And at that point I had to pay myself. I had to give myself the money so that I could survive and so that I could continue making this work that I felt so passionately about. But eventually I realized that I'm still being underpaid for that work. And so part of deciding to move on is recognizing my own value as an artist and as a creator is more than my own business could give me. I couldn't afford to hire myself. Yeah, and I think this perception that I was doing so much more volume than I actually was. So even though I was able to grow the magazine 300% between 2018 and 2019, I still claimed a loss for 2019 because of how much it cost for me to work the magazine. And, and I don't think I realized the depth and the amount of work that I was doing without even acknowledging it for myself and, you know, compensating myself appropriately for it until I stopped. So if you are one of my customers and you have stumbled upon this video and you have a Get Bulky sweatshirt, if you bought that in the first run or in the first two runs of Get Bulky, you're only one of 110 people. There are only 110 of those sweatshirts out in the world. I think there was this perception that there were thousands and I think there's just, there's a lot of factors at play here. And mostly what it comes down to is being authentic to myself and to my own work. And going forward, my work is going to be under my own name and it's going to change as I change. So it is not inherently connected to a sport or an experience or a time or a place. It is me. And so that will allow me to create more freely and not feel so boxed in by the magazine. And I also just reached a point where I stopped wanting the Snatch Magazine Instagram account to grow because I couldn't handle the pressure of having to show new people that it was just me. Because the more followers the Instagram account got, the more it seemed like I was running this huge operation, which I wasn't. I don't know. I, I, I hope this provides some sense of clarity and some insight, but I do want to go over some of the amazing parts of running Snatch Magazine and some of the things that I will miss, despite, honestly, my excitement to move on with my life. And I think part of that is how validating it was to have people feel seen by my work. That was not at all my expected outcome. I never expected to make this work and have people say, I feel seen by that, you know? And people, countless people sent me so many messages along the way saying that they felt touched by my work and that they appreciated it and they felt validated and that I should keep going. And those messages really did help. And I really did 
want to continue to pursue through for those people. But ultimately, I'm, I'm not that person anymore. You know, I don't think that I've changed on principle, but my values have changed. I don't value exercise in the same way that I once did. I don't prioritize exercise over relationships in my life, and I don't, I don't choose to spend my money and my time changing and fixing and repairing my body. I am trying to learn to just exist and see how that feels to not have to wake up for years and years and years to go train and to not have to take 15 to 25 hours out of my week to lift a barbell. I think some circumstances that happened in my life really opened my eyes to that and that was when I started to become really disillusioned to the whole sport and to what I saw as the selfishness in sport which is that it's constantly about you and it's constantly about you lifting and and it's constantly about what you're eating and what you're putting in your body and how much you weigh and how, how much was your snatch today? How much was your clean and jerk today? And did you stretch? Did you get your massage? Did you go to PT? Did you talk to your doctor? Did you get... It was just a constant, constant job. It was a job. And I realized that I was never going to be compensated for it. I was never going to qualify to go to senior nationals. Every year, they stretched the qualifications for senior nationals another 10 kilos, and I just could consistently not reach it. I had repeated troubles with my spine and my knees. I sustained a 14-month injury with my knees and spent thousands of dollars on physical therapy just to go back into the gym. And looking back on that now, I don't regret my decision, but I definitely wouldn't make that again. So I don't know. It's, I didn't plan on telling the story and having it be so intrinsically linked to my weightlifting career, but it really is. And it's more about the authenticity of myself and the work that I'm creating. And I think it's going to be really hard and it has proven to be really hard for me to figure out what to make work about, if not about weightlifting, because I've relied on that as a category for my work for such a long time, and I was so focused on creating a thematic unity in my work that now I'm trying to create a new body of work post-college, and I'm not even really sure where to start, and that's something that I've been working on for at least a year now. But so the amazing parts, back to the amazing parts. Um, you know, going to national meets and seeing people wearing my stuff or seeing, seeing people have stickers of my stuff on their water bottles, that was such an amazing feeling. That was such a validating feeling. And while I was never able to really pay myself outright, I never got a salary or anything, I was able to finance many of the things that helped keep me afloat as an artist and as a creator and as a person. Um, you know, Snatch Magazine helped pay my rent. And I was able to prove so many incredible things to myself, so many things that I didn't know that I could do. Uh, like a big milestone was hitting a thousand orders. I hit 1,000 orders. Like, 1,000 times people went onto my website and purchased something from me. And that was just so insanely validating. And, and that's why I'm hopeful that this is not a sad ending. This is not the end of me selling things online. This is not the end of me creating art and creating things that hopefully people resonate with. This is just the end of my path with the fitness industry. I have so many frustrations with the fitness industry and the, and the way that decisions are made under the IOC and under USA Weightlifting, and and I just didn't feel prepared to fight those battles anymore, and I, I just don't feel passionate about those issues anymore, and I instead feel liberated to be gone from them, and so I think it's really only fair to me as an artist to, to do myself the favor of moving on. I know I had kind of a serious tone throughout this, but I want to be clear that I am excited about what's to come, and I, and I don't think this is the end, and it, I hope that if you're here because you're a fan of Snatch Magazine, that you continue to follow me and my work. I no longer have an Instagram account, just because pretty much the only reason I continued to have an Instagram account was because of Snatch Magazine, and now, um, now that that's over, I have deleted my personal account. The Snatch Magazine account will stay up so that I can try to get a job and prove that I actually did run this thing. But yeah, I will be making videos here on YouTube. That's pretty much my only platform right now. I'm not really looking to be on any other platforms. I'm just looking to take things a little slower and be a little bit more intentional with my work and create things that are more long form and don't necessarily serve the purpose of selling things. I think eventually I would love to sell my art again and to create things, but at this point in time, I'm not looking to contribute to being the reason why people are working in factories. Um, so I don't feel right selling products that I'm not either providing myself or, you know, creating myself. So for that reason, 
shirts and stuff probably won't happen for a long time unless I whip out the screen print and start making them myself again, which in all honesty is probably unlikely for a while. So ultimately, I just want to say thank you to the people that have been here and here being with me in any capacity. If you are just landing on this video and you've watched all the way through, if you were a Snatch Magazine customer, if you are a subscriber, a new subscriber, I really appreciate you being here. It is a very weird time in the world, especially to be making content online. And the last thing that I want to close on in this video is a little montage of all the things that I made while running Snatch Magazine. I made a ridiculous number of designs, like a ridiculous number. I made so many items from stickers to patches to cards to shirts to posters to pins. There were so many things that I made and produced and I am so proud of myself for doing that and and I hope that that really shows that anybody can do that. Any artist that wants to make things and sell things, you can do that and you don't have to be a huge company to do that and you don't have to have 10,000 subscribers. You don't even really have to have a thousand subscribers. I was selling Snatch Magazine issues and stickers with less than a thousand followers. So I really want to encourage people to, if you're thinking about selling merch, you should absolutely do it, but try to be aware of the times that we're living in and the larger cost of doing business beyond just you. Think about the people that are manufacturing those stickers or think about the people that are manufacturing shirts and take their safety into consideration when you when you make your own decisions for how you sell merch. I think once this is all over, do it, you know? And if you're making stickers at home, do it. So yeah, um, this has been a really weird video. Anyway, thank you for watching. My name is Sophia Metropolis. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it, I guess, and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. If you are not already, please subscribe. I would be happy to have you here and show you the random shit that I make. So without further ado, here is a little compilation of all the things I made while running Snatch Magazine that I still have with me. Some of them are not going to be included because I don't have them. <laughs> so here we go. Thank you for watching. Bye! <laughs>